This man bought a struggling airlines for 25 cents and turned it into a successful company worth a billion dollars. His name is Tony Fernandez and he is the co-founder of Air Asia, one of the biggest airlines in Malaysia. He made his dream of starting an airline a reality despite everyone laughing at his crazy dream. But did you know, the most exciting part of his journey was how he started the company. In this video, we'll explore the up and downs and the dramas that Tony had to endure to get AirAsia running. In his early days, Tony worked for Richard Branson. During this time, Branson would go on to start Virgin Atlantic Airways. Tony told his boss that it was a stupid idea because he did not want Richard to sell off the music business that he was working at. He left the company due to his worries and joined Warner Music, which he left after the company got acquired. Now the jobless Tony Fernandez was a little lost in life. He had left the music industry that he loved so much. And one fateful day, he saw a TV interview of a person who had started a well-known airline. Then he had this crazy thought of starting his own airline. Tony brought on his good friend and soon co-founder Kamarudin Moran to discuss the idea. The initial plan was to provide international flights from Malaysia to Europe and partnering with other airlines for connecting flights. However, they were unsure of the idea because they had no experience in the aviation business. They needed help. Through his connections, he got connected to Conor McCarthy, a man with over 20 years experience in the airline business. Tony asked him to come to Malaysia to help. Conor rejected but he gave Tony a chance. If they really wanted his help, they had to fly to London to meet him. Five days later, Tony got on a flight to London. Tony shared his business plans, but Connor said it wouldn't work. Connor then gave him a new idea instead, which was to focus on low-cost domestic flights in Malaysia. They could copy everything that the European airline companies were already successful at. And Tony loved the new idea. He stood up, took his old business plan and ripped it in half in front of Connor. And soon after, Tony hired Connor as a consultant to build his new airlines. And over the next few months, the plans were made and the team was built. They even brought on a new shareholder, Abdul Aziz, for financial support. But they would meet their next obstacle very soon. They had no idea how to get an airline license. You see, the airline business was controlled by the Malaysian government. You needed their approval to start one. To solve this, Tony brought on a fourth co-founder who was highly involved in politics, Dato Bahamid. The new shareholder was able to get them an appointment with the then Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahade. Tony pitched his idea. Dr. Mahade loved the idea. At that moment, Tony felt that his dream was finally coming true. All his efforts are finally paying off. But the next thing that the Prime Minister said destroyed that moment. The Prime Minister told them he will not be giving them a new license. They had to buy an existing airline. The team left the meeting feeling very upset. Where were they supposed to go to buy an airline? But they decided to try anyway. They went around and asked, but found nothing. All hope seemed lost. And a few weeks go by, Tony decided just to relax and play some golf. He saw someone that he recognized. And lucky enough, he knew that that person owned an airline. He approached this man and said, Hey, I hear you have an airline. And the man replied, Yeah, wanna buy it? Tony said, Yes. And the man replied, You can have it tomorrow. We don't need it. However, he did not know anything about the airline. Was it even doing well? Tony went back and did lots of research on this company called Air Asia. 
The company had two aging planes and over 200 employees. The owner who started the project had already passed on and no one was leading the project. It was a financial burden to the current company as Air Asia was making losses and had amassed a debt of 10 million US dollars. But Tony and his partners needed an airline and this was it. They went to meet the CEO of the company the next day and when the CEO asked them how much they wanted to pay for it, Tony replied one ringgit, which is equivalent to 25 cents and to that shock, the CEO agreed but on one condition. They wanted nothing to do with the airline. This meant removing their responsibility of paying for the planes. Tony then went to the company responsible for the loans and these were the words that he said. Look, I studied portfolio risk management at university. If you treat me as every other credit applicant, then of course, I'm not going to qualify and you will turn me down. Fair enough. But if I make this airline work, I'm going to become a massive customer. I might be leasing or buying 1,000 engines from you. Go on, take a risk. It's two planes out of your 2,000. AirAsia isn't growing now. You'll get the money for the remainder of the contract, but you won't make any more money. Go on, take a leap of faith. Give up the guarantee. And after some negotiation, the company actually agreed to help Tony. Tony and his team finally signed and took over AirAsia on 8 September 2001. Now that everything was in place, they got to work fast. AirAsia was still losing money. They had to make some big changes to become a low-cost airline. They redesigned the plane by removing business class seats to fit in more economy seats. Then they started selling food. After that, they removed the travel agents. Tony decided to switch to an online booking system and when AirAsia had everything in place, they dropped the price of an air ticket by 97% from 400 ringgit to 9 ringgit 99 cents. Everyone in the country went crazy. This was a time when many Malaysians had never flown before. Only 10 to 15% of the population had actually flown. AirAsia transformed air travel in Malaysia completely. And within seven months, AirAsia had paid off their debt and continued to expand. Fast forward to now, AirAsia is one of the largest airlines in Malaysia and has flown hundreds of millions of people on their planes. We can actually learn a lot from Tony Fernandez. He had to make the right connections to make the whole thing work. But remember, Tony wasn't from the airline industry, so nobody was taking him seriously. The key aspect that made him so successful was that he was very good at persuading other people. Persuasion is one of the skills that we can improve on in our daily lives. This way, we can make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Thanks for watching.